Somebody sent me the story in email. A person went to a wedding and he sees his third grade Rebbe in school. And he goes over to him and he says, Shalom Aleichem, do you remember me? He says, no. He said, I learned in your class, third grade. He said, yeah, it was like probably 30 years ago. He says, wow, it's so nice. Mazel Tov, great to see you. What's your name? He says his name. Oh, I remember such a name in my class. He says, what do you do? And he tells his old teacher, I am a third grade teacher, just like you. He says, wow, that's amazing. What inspired you to do that? He says, you. I mean, when I saw the impact you had on me in third grade, I decided I want to have such an impact on people. He says, what type of impact did I have on you? He said, I was a very poor kid. We came from a poor family. All I craved was a watch. My parents couldn't afford a watch. One day I saw that one of my classmates in third grade got this new watch and he had it in his coat. So by recess, I decided to steal his watch. He came back from playing outside by recess. He walks in, he sees his watch is gone. He starts screaming to you, to the teacher, somebody stole my watch. So you turn to all the kinderlach and you say, did somebody by mistake or not by mistake take a watch? It's not yours, it belongs to somebody, please give it back and it's fine. At this point, I was too embarrassed to give back the watch. I was afraid of reprisals and revenge and anger and who knows what would happen to me. And you close the door and you said, somebody needs to give back the watch. And nobody was showing up with the watch because I was too embarrassed. And you said, everybody please line up and close your eyes and empty your pockets onto the desk near you and nobody's gonna see anybody else and we'll give back the watch. And that's what you did. And you had everybody's eyes closed, including mine. So when my watch came out at the desk, nobody could see it. And you saved me from public shame and humiliation that day. And I thought you would call me in afterwards and reprimand me for what I did. You didn't even do that. You ignored the story as though it never ever happened. And when I saw how you saved my dignity that day, because I thought I would be shamed for life, I decided I want to go into this field. I want to do for other children what you did for me. And the older teacher was so moved. He says, wow, that is so beautiful. That is so amazing. He says, Rebbe, you're making as though you don't remember the story. You must remember the story. He says, actually, I don't. He says, you mean when you hear my name and you look at me, you don't remember that I stole a watch and you found it and you did not tell me anything and nobody else knew about it? He says, I don't remember, I don't. He says, how can it be? And he says, I also closed my eyes. I didn't know it was you. I just saw a watch and I gave it back. It was irrelevant to me who took it. I said this over before Slichus. A few days later, I'm getting messages from friends in Brazil, one after another. Wow, this story really did it well. I'm like, what happened? There was the president of Brazil was then running for re-elections. Somebody sent him a clip of me telling the story before Slichus. He had it translated with captions into Portuguese and he sent it out to 25 million people on his list with an introduction. The introduction was, we have to learn from the Jewish people how to educate children. Watch the full class at theyeshiva.net.